It's your boy E Ness. Make sure y'all check me out. Bootleg Kev Podcast. Bing bong! Bootleg Kev Podcast special guest in here representing Philly. Yes, sir. My guy E Ness, man. Welcome, bro. You already know, King of Battle Rap. The king of battle rap. What makes you king, the king of freestyles? Of, what makes you the king of battle rap right I've now? I've been doing it before battle leagues was battle leagues. That's why I'm the king of battle rap. Before they start, uh, made it a corporate thing and brought it into the building and, and kind of monetized it. I was I was battle rapping. That's how. I mean, what is it about Philly, man? That the battle rap shit is just so like, you know. I feel like you guys are just like a walking smack DVD out there. Yeah, man. It's, it's real, the culture is real heavy out there. Is um is a Commonwealth city so it's like state and it's just like real competitive and we all bunched in together yeah. it's like row houses so it's people on top of people so the competitiveness is real heavy so when it comes to pat- battle rap it's real aggressive and sometimes it can spill out into street i technically technically was in philly once okay but it was only because i rode the train through from dc to oh. New York. but they did stop there was like a stop in chester and i looked out the window Chester, Pennsylvania looks like it might be the worst place on the planet. No, it is. It's real bad. Shop Bro, I Chester, remember just though. looking out the window on my train, and there was like two like kids just in the streets running around, and I remember being like, where the fuck am I? Where the fuck? Like a third world country. I pulled up, put my maps on, I said, Chester. And then I Googled it, and I was like, oh, it's lit out here. <clears throat> it is lit. Shout out to Chester, man. Yeah. I need to get out to Philly. What, hey, what is the... Because I always hear, if you go to Philadelphia, that there is... Like the tourist cheesesteak spot, yeah. but then there's like the real spot. Right. Well, Max, Max's is like the spot where you want to go to get a real authentic cheesesteak. Gino's is the, the tourist. tourist spot. So don't just, go to Gino's. I'm not going to belittle any landmark in Philly. Right, That's right, not right. what I'm into, but I'm just saying. A little wanna, overrated. Yeah. yeah. If you want to go get an authentic cheesesteak, right. go to Max's, Broad and Airy. It's almost like when people come to L.A. and they expect Roscoe's to be like the best food they've right. ever eaten. And it's like, guys, it's just and when right. I come here, that's what they say. Like, bro, you want to go to Roscoe's? I'm like, it's okay. But I've been coming out here since the early 2000s. So I'm like over the, like, yeah, yeah like the first time right. being out here type. So yeah, everybody want to come that come out L.A., they want to go to Roscoe's. But and it's all right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, but if you've been into Atlanta and Gladys, it's the same thing. Or if you go to Arizona, go to Lolo's Chicken and Waffles. I would argue to say it's the best chicken and waffle spot I've ever had. Shout out to Lolo's. For sure. Um, when did you feel like the battle rap? Because like you're, I feel like you're really in your bag right now when it comes to like being looked at as like one of the elite guys in that world. Like when do you feel like you kind of had hit your stride in terms of getting your respect in that world? Because it's like a very, it's it's like a almost like a. I feel like you could be a, a diehard hip hop head and not know what the going on in the battle rap world because right. they are so different and it is like such a sub genre of it's almost like culture. you have to be baptized in the battle rap culture now you have to go through something you have to have a near death experience or come right. close to dying from them to even sanctify you as being anybody that has any validity of saying anything or speaking about battle rap culture it's that intense right so which is why i don't speak on it much. <laughs> yeah so with that being said um, is a high regard for battle rappers and, and their accountability. So over the weekend, it was a, a battle rap. I mean, it was a battle, big battle league. You were here. Um, for yeah, that, I was yeah. here for that. So it was the ownership battle league, which in the main event being a uh, King Bow versus Daylight. Daylight being a residence of West Coast. So yeah. Daylight's a beast. So shout out to Daylight, and we are from the same battle rap clique, which is Dot Mob, Me, T Rex, Murder Moot. Uh, daylight, Jesus. Big Cannon, Real Deal. So it was that's like a, a serious clip. crew. Yeah, yeah, you guys real. are like the NWO of yeah, battle yeah. rap. And I got a lot of flack from that, from being from Philly, and being that is a New York based click. But, but Daylight's from LA, yeah, right? So yeah. it's, it's all over though. Yeah. yeah. Is there so, other clicks like that? Yeah, you got Gun Titles. You got uh, uh, the Goonies, which is headed by Twerk. Uh, you got Gun Titles, which was kind of like co 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 founded by. Uh, Tay Rock and Sue Surf, which is a company in Carson Sue, Free, Free Sue Surf. Surf. Yeah. So yeah, you got little uh, like clicks, Dark Side, you got a uh, uh, Briz Rothstein and T Top. So it was like little sub clicks and all. Yo, what's like the that. name of our guy? Rum Nitty's from Phoenix, right? Yeah, he from he from Phoenix XZ. He he's down with a uh, 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 my bad Geechee Gotti. Geechee Gotti and him are called uh, uh, Every Bar EFB. I like that. See all this shit, like I know the names, yeah. but bro, I'm not in tune with the battle like that i just feel like i don't have the bandwidth to like learn this like when i was a kid i used to download the battles on napster yeah like when it was like supernatural and juice 
Yeah, those those guys is like almost like ancient artifacts compared to where it's at now. It's so sped up. And then I would no disrespect yeah, to those guys. No, for those sure. guys are the goats. Right, right, right. They are the gods of this with the freestyling off the top of the dome. Right, right, right. In the room and all that. Even the crowd. It's different. It's no, monetized. It's, different it's brand. It's got wavy hair, dreadlocks, baldies. It's crip members. It's blood members. Yeah, it's, it's intense. It's Latin king Well, members. no, and then like there, there like, was like the Smack DVD era and like I got my name because I used to sell a bunch of bootleg mixtapes and, and DVDs and shit at the swap meet. So I was like, the Smack DVD era was a, probably the, the highest like peak of me being like super engaged in that. Shit. And then obviously, I know who's killing it. Like I know yourself. I know... Murder Mook, Sue's my boy. Lux. Rum Nitty's incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's there's guys that, lo especially Loaded Lux, you mm -hmm. know, all these guys. I've, I've, of course, there are legends that if you're a part of the culture, you have to know who they are. I'm just not, I, I haven't, bro. I've watched a few, like, in the last year, but, like, mm -hmm. when there's these big events, I, I feel like I'll just catch the highlights on Twitter. Right, <laughs> right. So Battle Rap is like a, um, it's like a revolving door. So you're only good as your last battle. And if you don't do very well, they put you in a box. Mm. So, I mean, if you don't do other things to uh, to to, compo to, like, to, to to oppose that. So I went and built the whole leverage on the other side of the spectrum with my music. Right. Reintroducing myself as an artist or recreating myself always into the point and putting out a new project where I got the battle rap culture in there. I got Tay Rock on there. I right. got Method Man. I got Benny the Butcher. I got a, 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 a Vado. Corey Guns, Beanie Siegel, Freeway. Right. I got all the like the, the top spitters on my joint. So I use that, the leverage and the buzz that I built with my freestyles on social media and the content and uh and, and, and the projects and the material that I was putting out outside of battle rap to leverage battle rap to get the bigger bags and the bigger looks. Cause once you lose in the eyes of the culture, they put you in a certain box and it's like boxing. So you gotta climb back up the ranks until you get to the top brass and compete with like the top tier guys. And if you got the catalog, you got the music outside of it, it's almost like it would it would behoove them to not include you in shit because you got a fan base. You you running it up on your own. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And shout out. I mean, a lot of a, there is there is a a stereotype, and I, I don't know how true it is or no. not. But back in the day, there used to be a lot of the guys who did battle rap weren't great at making records. I mean, that's the, the number one stigma. And I, I was the guy who bridged that gap. Right. Gap. I was one of the first guys who started out battle rapping on the corners of Philadelphia and, and in front of the Chinese stalls and stuff like that and actually took it corporate and made an album and came right. out with a full-fledged album and, you know what I mean, was able to, you know... Go like walk on, take a walk on both sides, right? And still having a seed planted in battle rap culture as well as like mainstream, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, releases and stuff like that. Because at 2008, when I battled my sign, the World Series of Hip Hop, I was still currently signed a bad boy and was like currently, like, like back then, uh, uh recording for my for my solo release, my like, son. Shout out to my yeah, son, so yeah, so like that's how far I go back, and that was before Smack was created at that event. Smack was the actual cameraman, he was hired to do a mm -hmm. service. So now look at them now to where they're a full fledged company and got the caffeine deal right. and all the things they got going on. So I was a part of that, I'm a part of those building blocks, and I just don't get my credit, but I embrace that fact. So that's why I'm here, still 20 years later, beating these young opponents up, beating a new competition up, getting there with the youngins, letting them know that a guy that's considered. Some would say past his prime still got enough in the tank to get in there and, and, and destroy these guys, these young cats. Hey, we got to stop the interview real quick to tell you about the homies at MyBookie. Bet on anything, anywhere, anytime at MyBookie.ag. And check this out. If you sign up right now with the keyword bootleg, you're going to get a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. And that's not it. If you sign up with that keyword bootleg, not only will you get that first deposit bonus up to $1,000, but you're also going to get a free $50,000 Sweet 16 bracket entry. So many ways to win at mybookie.ag. I've been using them for about 10 years now. Trust me when I say I'm not co-signing them because they're dropping the bag. I mean, that's nice, but I've been literally using mybookie for the better part of the last decade to put all my sports bets in, to play a little online roulette, a little blackjack a little craps. It's all there. They got the live casino. They got so much going on. Look, March Madness is where it's at right now. You can get down with that uh, Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, the NCAA Final Four, all of it. NBA season in full effect. Baseball is about to kick off. Get in on the action. Bet on anything, anytime, anywhere right now with MyBookie. So sign up at MyBookie.ag. Use that promo code BOOTLEG. Right now for that first deposit bonus up to $1,000 and a free $50,000 Sweet 16 bracket entry. 
Hey, also, shout out to the homies at Blue Chew, man. Don't forget, if you're dealing with erectile dysfunction, if your penis is not functioning correctly, if it's a little flaccid, you're trying to get it a little hard, a lot of hard, rather, Blue Chew is where it's at. A lot of people ask me, you always talk about Blue Chew. Does it work? Yes, it works. All right. Uh, listen, it has the same active ingredient as Viagra and as Cialis, but it's in a chewable form. All right. It is sent right to your door uh, in a discreet package. It's a great thing, man. Go to bluechew.com right now. You use that promo code bootleg right now. You're going to get a month supply for free of Blue Chew. Why not have some better sex, okay? Seriously. Uh, there's so many other ways you can get down to because they just dropped the Blue Chew Mint flavor, which is the same active ingredient as Levitra. Just so many things we can do here. Uh, and look, when you go to bluechew.com and you sign up with that promo code bootleg, they're going to literally send it straight to your crib for free. $5 in shipping. You get a month supply for free. Now, how does it work? One, you don't need to go to any doctor's appointments. It's all handled online with an online pharmacist. You don't have to worry about going and sitting in a waiting room to go discuss your dick with some strange dude or chick. Hmm. Maybe you're into that. I don't know. With that being said, it's an awkward situation, all right? If you're dealing with erectile dysfunction, all you need to do is go to bluechew.com right now, use the promo code bootleg, and you will get one month supply for free, zero dollars, right to your door. Your wife will even never know it even happened. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you've been a little embarrassed. You're tired of piping down that same old bra that you've been sleeping with for the last 35 years. Put a little pep in your step, man. Take a Blue Chew. Use that promo code bootleg at bluechew.com and try it for free. Uh, you linked up with Kanye last year. How did that, how did that, first of all, that's a big, big connect. Yeah, I remember you were yeah. supposed to come on the show and I he was know. like, yeah. bro, I'm with Kanye right now. I was like, <clears throat> don't even worry about it. You even sent me a pic. I was like, yeah. bro, I believe you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. No, because everybody, you know, um, I just want to start off by saying tw uh, I knew Kanye for over 25 years, way before he, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I always knew what he was going to do. Yeah, I knew always knew he was different. And um, just just a short story, um, we we had a mutual friend, Plain Pat and Ferris Bueller. They shout, was shout to Plain Pat. Yeah, they was executives over at Def Jam. Plain uh, Pat, what up? Yeah, he got Plain, that drop. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, we would have mutual friends, and uh, during like during the recording process, other making a band album, I invited them to the to the crib mm -hmm. when we were recording in Soho at the Double Brownstone. By chance, Mr. Bentley said we couldn't have no company. So I had to tell Kanye he couldn't come in and submit beats. And then two years later, Mr. Bentley signed to Good Music. That's so hilarious. I forgot that <laughs> he got signed. I forgot Diddy's assistant had a record deal and put out some yeah, records. Yep. So that was crazy. I always, uh, me, me and Fines are worth always laugh about this. Oh, I'm hey, like, you, you didn't even know Remember who he when was. you didn't let Kanye in and now you're signed to him? That shit's hilarious. So me and Kanye had a relationship and by my Instagram, a presence and just dropping freestyles and being consistent. He seen one he of noticed. my freestyles. He said, yo, you been my bro for a minute, come out and gave me an open invitation to come, you know, some writing sessions with him. Yeah. So I saw that, uh, you know, there was the, I don't know if that documentary is ever going to come out, but he was previewing a record and you were saying that you were on that record with him and Soldier Boy. Yeah. Uh, well, I did some references, so he was actually hearing me playing a reference off my phone for him in the footage. Ah. So we was both in the car, and you know, I, mean, I, I forgot we was being taped, because he's being taped, filmed all day long. If you're like helping Ye, right, what is the, where, what mind state do you have to be in if you're like, I have to help the, like one of the greatest artists of all time? Um, it was just, it's not like working for Diddy. Working for Diddy is like real, so, okay, so everybody asks me why I put out so much material and why I'm so, it seems like me, it, it's an easy transition for me to keep putting out these constant freestyles. Well, when I came up in the bad boy system, they used to make us write five verses for every verse. So if we was doing a three verse song, I would have to 15. write five verse, 15 verses per song. Wow. So. And then you pick the best ones. Yeah. Which usually is the first fucking verse you wrote. Right. So from there, you're like. <laughs> so I got. 13 extra, I got 14 extra verses. Just, just, just unused. Unused. Do you still do that? Yeah, um, every now and then. Well, back in the mixtape games, when mixtapes were heavy, I would take the, uh, the, uh, um, the DJ Sycamores and all, yeah. the, all those type of guys. So I, no matter whether I like the beat or not, and this is what I got from Diddy. This is one of the lessons I got from Diddy. He was like, Ness is not writing, about the, writing to the beats that you don't like. 
It's not about writing to the beats that you do like. Try writing to the beats that you don't like. Mm. So then when you hear a beat that you do like, it's like fucking. It's, it's like water. Yeah. So I take a I take every beat off the beat CD and write a sixteen to it, no matter whether I like it or not. Hey, that's how you sharpen your your pen for real. Because if you can write to some shit you don't fuck with, then if you start writing for somebody else, well, it's, and they might not be in your bag. So now I got an endless supply of material. Mm. So when I do go do these writing sessions, it's not me physically have to write. Now you I'm can just, pull. You can pull. I'm just pulling shit out. I'm yeah. just pulling ideas out from from, from, from everywhere. Wow, yeah. that's that's crazy. Uh, you got the new project out? Sure. Is this a mixtape? I know tape? this is a mixtape. Shut up, everybody. I know everything is digitized. I'm kind of one of those guys that's like coming into the new fruition of the, the where where is that? So is digitally. this on Spotify? Yes. Yeah, it's, we, we, we're trying to get that up and running now. But I, this is what I want to say. It's everywhere. Your boy says it's yeah, everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. But as as an artist that's been around, has been seasoned, I didn't come in like come into the game around you know this era. Right. So me and my team, we still in under construction to figure it out. You gotta get a distro kit account. It's that easy. No, it's that easy. Okay. It's that easy. <laughs> He's like, bro, we we got it. But <laughs> Everybody that say, why you got the- Don't make this yourself the, sound like no, a this dinosaur is for the right nostalgia. now. You're not a dinosaur. No, I'm not a dinosaur, but I want to tell you, this is for the nostalgia. Yo, let me tell you, this is literally how I made my whole entire This is for the career. nostalgia. This, that's what I'm mm -hmm. saying. I used to print So these. for all the hip hop heads, this is not that I'm outdated. This is for the nostalgic feeling of mixtapes. Listen, I used to go to the store- The actual room, hard copy. And I used to buy these jewel cases and burn these CDs <laughs> and print these covers in my parents' bedroom. <laughs> yep. So, this is not saying I'm outdated. This is paying homage to where I came well, from. Yeah, physical product. Yeah, physical which product. real fans can support. So, Enes the Friends, Enes and Friends. I got Benny the Butcher, which is the first single, Trifecta. I got the single uh, featuring Zosos and DJ Crazy. Um, um, uh, this, that was then and this is now. I got the Blicky Out, Corey Guns, Beanie Siegel, Vado, and who's who? Tay Rock, Beanie. Like, it's just uh, like all spitters. All spitters. Who's you? Um, if we're talking about the Mount Rushmore of Philly. Rappers, who's on it, man? Excluding uh, yourself. Beanie Siegel has to go there. Meek Millie has to go there. Those are the Black two. Thought. Yeah, those are the three, right? And yeah, then the fourth like, one's kind of. Yeah. It could be Freeway. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. So I got those three at the top. But you need one more. It's um, Mount Rushmore. There's four people. Schoolie D. Schoolie D, the OG. I like it. That's like the OG era. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Black Thought is like one of the most prolific uh, no, shout out to Thought. lyricists yeah. ever, man. Shout out Crazy. To Black Thought. Yeah. Crazy. Hey, we got to stop the interview real quick to tell you about our family at Odd Socks, baby. That's right. Shout out to Odd Socks. A little Godfather sock right there. Craziest licenses in the game. The most comfortable socks, period. And if you go to oddsocksofficial.com right now, use the promo code bootleg, you're going to get 20% off at checkout. Now, they also got the underwear going on. These are some Street Fighter draws. Let's pop these boys open. Let's check them out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little Chun Li versus Blanco. What? Amazing. Do you like Yuhu so much that you'd wear Yuhu on your feet? There's people running around out here with goddamn hot Cheeto jumpsuits right now. So, of course, you would. Shout out to Yuhu. They got crazy licenses. We already mentioned Street Fighter, Coca Cola. Pepsi, yes, they got the they got the both there. They got Pepsi and Coca Cola. Uh, they also got Scarface, Breaking Bad, WWE. So many dope licenses. Plus their Odd Socks Basics line, which are these, just kind of the normal socks. In my opinion, are the most comfortable socks I've ever put on my feet. I promise you, you gotta go to oddsocksofficial.com right now and use the promo code Bootleg. Save twenty percent off your entire order. All right, so go do that. Oddsocksofficial.com. Also, want to give a shout out to our family at Hardeen. That's right, Hardeen, the craziest dispensary you've ever walked into in your life. Hardeen, Las Vegas. You got to pull up, follow them on Instagram. Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. You see the hat? You see the logo? Shout out to the family at Hardeen. If you're in Vegas, you got to stop off. You got to go pick you up some weed. It is legal in Vegas. Tell them I sent you. They're going to take care of you, all right? Uh, make sure you follow them. Harding underscore Las Vegas, the largest selection of premium cannabis I've ever seen in my life. The best smelling place I've ever walked into in my life. They have a signature scent that's fucking insane. So shout out to Harding. Go follow them. Harding underscore Las Vegas. Check out more info about them at HardingLasVegas.com. Let's get back to the interview. 
Um, all right, so that's how people can go get it. And I everywhere. got the cheesecake too. So I turn lemon into the lemonade. Let me speak about that too, because I, I always, ah, but I got to throw it in. I was trying to go the whole interview without talking nah, about but it. You I'm sure talk you're about tired it. of it, yeah. I am tired of it, but I'm not never tired people of making who, money from yeah, it. Yeah, so listen, you have your own <laughs> cheesecake, and yeah. what year was making the band? 2002. Jesus. So in t- 2002, making the band was uh, one of the best reality shows ever. The I- most iconic episode is when yes. you guys had to walk to for Juniors che- yes, for, cheesecake. for cheesecake. Yeah, very humbling experience. Yeah. Lesson being learned and everything. It's not about what you want to do. It's about what needs to be done to get the job done. And you have your own cheesecake. I have my own cheesecake. Is it good? Yes, it is. How can they get it? Follow me on Instagram. Ness Cheesecake. At N-E-S-S-C-H-E-E-S-E-C-A-K-E. Is that something people have to be in Philly to purchase? Uh, you could purchase it offline. We trying to get the deal with the door. How you? How you? Sh- hey, I'm a, oh, you you got to get the, ki- the ghost kitchen. Yeah, and we got the we got the boxes with the with the with the, with the like the refrigeration built in with no, it. No, listen. All you got to do is get a ghost kitchen situation. A ghost popping. kitchen. <laughs> got to put me up. Okay, have you ever opened game. up Postmates and seen that like DJ Khaled has a restaurant, or like Tyga or Wiz Khalifa have like their own restaurants, like okay. in every city you go to? Okay. What it is is. You 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 hire a, a ghost kitchen. So let's say you're in L.A. or you are in New York or wherever you think you got a big following, right? You find a commercial kitchen that does Postmates or Grubhub shit, and then you have you have a restaurant virtually online in all those cities, and this kitchen handles the fulfillment. They're pretty much licensing your likeliness to oh, sell your cheesecake. Okay, yeah. but they cook it. They have the you real just give estate. Them the receipt and you give them the no, patent. No, they just they just essentially give you a cut to use your likeliness. Oh wow! Put me on. So now you like like if you open like Postmates right now, you'll see like DJ Khaled has a restaurant. Postmates, I got you, got you. So but they, he doesn't have a restaurant. But he, he just they just selling his product. They giving they they, they using his likeness to sell a hundred percent. Got you. Yeah, it's kind of like the yeah. It's, it's a, a lot of people are doing the ghost kitchen wave. It's, and just to clean it up. The album is everywhere digitally on all everywhere. Platforms. It's on Spotify. It's, it's on Apple Music. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, <clears throat> and it might be at a, at a bodega in Philly shit. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right, man. Oh, well, yeah. look, yo, new YouTube video with the freestyle. So check it out. Appreciate you pulling up, brother. Yeah, What's the yeah. next battle? A Ward R B E A R P Ness versus A Ward. Stay tuned. When is it? I don't know. I'm supposed to be on the May 10th card. A R P. Yeah. Holla at me. Mm. Do you battle people who are your friends ever? Always. I battle my fucking grandmother if, if the check is right. I like it. There it is. Well, I want no smoke, man. <laughs> Eat that. Appreciate you, brother.